with Rudolph with the red rocket. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Hello, this is Ghosty, and welcome to my Christmas movie tier list. Or rather, the Xmas movie tier list, as you're watching the 12 days of XXXmas. And as you can see, we have a lot of movies to get through. A lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones, and we will rank them. Don't you worry, we definitely will. But first, I think the tier list is looking a little bland, a little boring to be honest. So let's give it that pizzazz, some Christmas cheer. There we go, that's much better. As for the S tier, I'm thinking the very tippy the top. The peak of Christmas movies, the very top where the best ones belong. And as for the next one, I have Worth the Wrapping, which I think is like a Christmas gift that you're looking forward to opening. You're excited to open it, and it's a gift. Some people would say that films and movies in general are some gifts, depending on the movie, and I think that's pretty fitting. As for B tier, um, I couldn't think of anything. So it's just balls, pretty much. You all expect way too much from me. But as for the next one, we have stocking stuff, which is like the contents you would find in a stocking. It's nothing to really get excited over. It's just the average stuff. And that's pretty much it. I think it's fitting for the middle tier. We have reindeer droppings, which isn't good, but it's also not the worst of the worst. So that's also pretty fitting. And then we have abominable atrocities, which is pretty self-explanatory. And if you don't know what never watched means, then get off the video. But for everyone that's still here, I'm going to continue as well, and let's get into the rankings. Starting off with A Christmas Carol, and I won't be surprised if this comes up more than once in this video, because there are many, many iterations of this story, and this one does it well, but it's not quite the best one, and I think nostalgia is really putting it high for me. Then the next one that is actually the first one going into the Just a Tip category, I have A Christmas Story, which is a very popular film when it comes to Christmas, and films in general. It's a highly likable movie, and very rewatchable. But I will say the constant amount of times that I've heard, you'll shoot your eye out, kid, really tempts me to do it myself. And now as for the next one, we have A Charlie Brown Christmas, which I think I'm going to be putting in Worth the Wrapping. It's a short little nice film. It's not that I hate the kid or anything. I'm just not that familiar with Charlie Brown over the years. So I'm putting it here. And it's just a, it's just a nice little wholesome little video or a film, a short film, whatever you want to call that. And now as for the next one, we have Arthur Christmas, which I think is a great film. I don't think it really deserves to be in the same tier as A Christmas Story. But I will say I'm a big fan of how the North Pole and their whole operation is high tech and it's like a spy agency. So I'm putting it here. And as for the next one, we have Bad Santa, which is a dark comedy pretty much. And it's definitely not for the kiddies. But this one has Santa in a depressive alcoholic episode. And it's enjoyable. It's funny. But I don't think it's amounts to the ones that we already have on the list and I think it's pretty fitting that this movie of all movies is the first one to go into the dumbest and vulgar name on the list. And now the next movie we have is Die Hard which I don't even know if you can consider that a Christmas movie. I know it takes place on Christmas or Christmas Eve but like you know, you know what never mind forget it. But we have Die Hard. Before this movie there were no stereotypical badass moments and now it is because this movie birthed them. And I'm gonna place it here not because of that, just because it's a great film overall. I just don't see it fitting the top tier compared to other movies on the list that are literally centered all around Christmas. So, there you go. And the next film we have is Elf, which is a pretty easy choice. I've probably watched this one way too many times, but it's a great movie, a great Christmas movie as well. And if there was a religion centered around Will Ferrell, I would not be surprised. And as for the next one, we have Eloise, which I had to do some research upon, considering I've never seen it myself. It has to be good if Walmart gave it a 5 out of 5, but for me, can't rank it. So there it is. Now as for Four Christmases, um, I've watched it before, but probably a while ago considering my memory might be a little bit fuzzy. So I could end up putting it higher or lower, but I think the middle ground is pretty fitting for now. The next one though is arguably the easiest one for me. It is Frosty the Snowman. I grew up on this and I still love it to this day. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is that this is my shit. So, easy top tier for me. Same for the next one. Honestly, not top tier, but a relatively easy one. I absolutely love the Gremlins, the film itself, and the franchise and creatures that it's made. So, there we go. Next up, we have Home Alone, which I think is an immediate top tier film. It's an amazing Christmas movie. 
and I think everyone should see it if you haven't. But now that I actually think about it, I don't think I've ever met a single person that hasn't seen Home Alone. So if you are watching this and you haven't seen this film, you're most likely either fresh out of the womb or you've just never seen it, which is also fine. But if you ever get robbed and you have no idea what to do, then it'll be your own fault. But me being included in most of the Earth's population that has seen this movie, then I can recognize that it's arguably the best Christmas movie. As for its sequel though in Home Alone 2, I think it has a lot of boring and just unnecessary stuff that is in the movie and gets dragged out for way too long. But I do like the whole vibe and the whole setting that it's in New York, but I don't think it deserves anything higher. Now as for the next two actually, we're putting both of these films in just the tip as we come across The Grinch. You cannot have the holidays, Christmas, or really the festive season at all without the story, or the movie, or however you prefer that, it's top tier without a doubt. As for the next one though, it looks like it has potential, and I might be missing out on something big, but this movie's old, and I have not seen it myself. It is It's a Wonderful Life down there and never watched, and I think this movie released before I was even thought of. But now for the next one, we have Jingle All The Way, which is just another kind of wholesome attempt at a Christmas movie. If you want to give it some bonus points, it does have Arnold Chores, but uh, nothing special. And the same thing stands for the next one, which is Love Actually. Well, actually, I could be missing on something special, considering it has Liam Neeson, Ellen Rickman, and a lot of other actors and actresses. But I'd never seen it. So, next. Which is going to end up being Miracle on 34th Street. This right here is a Christmas classic, and the holidays wouldn't be the same without it. I will say though, it is a pretty old movie, and I don't remember too much of it, so it feels wrong putting it in the highest tier. And I do want to say, this has nothing to do with the ranking, but Miracle on 34th Street birthed one of my favorite type of matches in the WWE. That's it. Or maybe this was the one that did that? Considering it was the more recent remake of Miracle on 34th Street, it's pretty much the same premise. They just added some legal stuff here and there. Don't know why. Stocking stuff, it goes. And now for the next one, we have Mixed Nuts. I see now that I might have been too generous, considering this is the first one going into this tier, but it is an abominable atrocity. This movie is a festive flop, a merry misfire, if you will. It jingles the bells of boredom, and it is a snowfall of sewage. An ornamental overdose of tomfoolery. And I'm actually a big Adam Sandler guy too. It's a shame. Now for the next one we have National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is kind of a mess, but also kind of not. The whole premise is that a family has a family gathering for Christmas, and that one family member that no one likes comes to visit, and things start to go haywire. It's a trope that a lot of shows and movies use, and this one does it in a batshit crazy way. So it's kind of average. But I'm not going to put it lower because of that reason. Because it's more fun than just the usual things you would think of. It's not like, hey, how did he get here? Who invited him? Hey, why are you using my wife's back scratcher? Why are you rummaging through our cabinets and fridge eating all of our food? Hey, why are you taking a shit in our children's stocking? It's not all that stuff. It's more of explosions and gunfire and all that stuff. So if that sounds fun to you, maybe this is the movie for you. And then the next film up is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which I honestly think is a movie for everyone. Especially if you enjoy road movies, or like, road trips, because that's what this is, pretty much. This film has a decent amount of decent comedy, which you probably can get a good laugh at. And the whole premise is that these two guys gotta get home and in time for the holidays, and they end up meeting each other and having to take the ride home. Together, pretty much. So, there you go. And now for the next one, adding to just the tip, we have Polar Express, which is an amazing film and an even better Christmas movie, and I don't think it deserves anything except the best. So, that's that. Now for the next one, we have another Christmas classic with Rudolph with the red rocket. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Rudolph with the red nose, like Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. It's, whatever, why did my mind go to that? It's an S tier, or just the tip, whatever. It's a classic, like I said, whatever, move on, just move on. Now we have a 1988 film titled Scrooged, which you can tell by the name, it's just another rendition of the Christmas Carol story with Scrooge and the ghost and whatnot, but this one's just more modernized in a modern setting, like current day, it's not all that special. Now we have a more recent film from 2017, The Man Who Invented Christmas, which I've never seen. Sue me. Now the next one is A Muppet's Christmas Carol, and I really feel wrong for not putting this in the top. 
I absolutely love the Muppets. I'm not afraid to, to <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. I love the Muppets, and I think it does deserve the top. But just take a look at what we do have in the top tier. They're all iconic. They're all staples of Christmas, and honestly, they're all really big things when it comes to the festive season. I'm not sure if Muppets exactly makes it in there. Very slightly, I'm kind of biased that I want to put it in there, but I'll play it safe and keep it in worth the wrapping. I'm so sorry, Muppets. Forgive me, please. Now, the next one is A Nightmare Before Christmas, and it is an easy top tier for me. I absolutely love this movie. It's probably one of my favorite movies ever, honestly. I love it start to finish, and I don't know what I'd do without it. It's either a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie, and I consider it both, so it's on the list, and it's top tier. Next, we have the first film of a trilogy, which is Santa Claus, with Tim Allen as what would be Santa. And now that I realize it, these movies actually take inspiration from A Miracle on 34th Street, both versions, and I just didn't realize that until now. But regardless, I think it is a fun and entertaining film, and it has to be above average if it's gotten two sequels. Maybe more that I don't know about, but we're keeping it here in balls. Or snowballs here. Whoops. Next one is Taking Places, which I feel like I should have seen. And if I do, I don't remember it because I'm putting it in Never Watched. So I either don't remember it at all or I haven't seen it and I need to up my game on my Christmas movies. Now this next one is a bit iffy because I'm pretty sure I have watched this and it was a while ago. But let's get one thing first. Whoopi motherfucking Goldberg turns into Santa in this movie. I don't know how you cannot like that. But besides that... The movie itself isn't the best. From what I remember, which isn't a lot, I did not enjoy it. So I'm putting it in reindeer droppings. Sorry, Whoopi. I feel like I had just sinned. But besides that, this one feels more of a blessing as we have another abominable atrocity. And see, this one's a little weird. Here, see this. Sometimes directors, or movie makers regardless, go to Christmas parties, which is expected. And they go under the mistletoe, and they get either rejected, or worse, and they end up drinking themselves into a depressive state. So because of this, their Neanderthal mind, and whatever concoction that they just downed within a second, they make an absolute horrible, awful love child, aka the script, and Christmas with the Cranks is a prime example of that. A lot of films end up turning into another sequel, and then a trilogy, and a lot of trilogies out there end up being from best to worst and it gets worse as movies keep releasing regarding the series and the Santa Claus trilogy does count for this and we have next Santa Claus 2 it's an okay film average at best I think the whole plot line is kind of stupid but at best it's an alright film so stocking stuff it is but now for this next one I'm feeling a little lucky as it's giving me another chance with an Adam Sandler movie but animated this time but the downside is that it's still kind of cheeks. I'm so so sorry, Mr. Adam Sandler, sir. But it's going in reindeer droppings. It's not the best and it's not the worst. So props to that. God, why am I just now realizing how many goddamn movies there are about saving Christmas? Ernest Saves Christmas is next and it's also going in reindeer droppings. I'm not a fan. Sorry. And now we continue to pile up on the pile of reindeer shit that is reindeer droppings with Fred Claus. It's an alright movie. I'm not a big fan of it, obviously. And I could honestly have it lower, considering Kevin Spacey has a role, but whatever. And now next up, we have a prime example of a company taking something that's not dead whatsoever and still trying to re revive it with a newer rendition. And that is exactly what the Grinch movie is. The animated version, at least. And I mean, it's an alright movie. It's enjoyable. It's just the same story, but animated and more new, I guess. It's a balls tier, sorry, it just doesn't compare to the ones prior to it. Now we have Home Alone 3. It's either a cash grab or an attempt at a sequel because the original was a success, and it's probably both. Regardless, it's reindeer droppings. For sure. Holy hell, I forgot how many Home Alones there are. Well, everyone has the same premise, kind of, kind of not. But this one, what better way than throw divorce into the mix? I don't know, who thought of this idea? And the same with this one. For Jack Frost, I know my ranking is a little unusual, but this movie is so ridiculously bad that it is kind of stupidly enjoyable. Kind of, not really. <laughs> I don't know. But for the next one, I do, and it's just Friends, which I have never seen. 
but I probably should since Ryan Reynolds is literally on the cover, but I have never watched it. And the same could be said for the next two, which is Last Holiday and To Grandmother's House We Go. That sounds like a sweet little movie, maybe I should have watched that, but I have not. So, there. A Medea Christmas, another case of one of them movies that are so ridiculously bad, it's kind of enjoyable, and that's why I'm putting it in stocking stuff. A lot of people actually have a big love for this movie, deep down, and I'm not sure why. Maybe nostalgia, maybe because it falters everyone's sense of humor. I don't know, it's pretty stupid, but that's the ranking. And now adding to Reindeer Droppings, we have a name that I don't know why was chosen, who thought of this, <laughs> but the name is Unaccompanied Minors. And it's not the worst movie ever, it's not really fun, but it's not also the best, and you could probably tell that by its name. And now up next, going into the balls category, I have The Christmas Chronicles, which is a Netflix film that released in, I think, 2018? I'm not too sure, but I think it's around there. But I can for a definite say that I watched this around the time of its release, and I did enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, don't try to call me out or anything, I know that I've been clowning uh, new renditions and revisited stories and all that in this video so far, but I think this one does it right. As for the next movie in Noel, it is just an average Christmas movie. It tries to include everything that every other Christmas film includes, and it ends up being a bit cheesy pretty much throughout the whole film, but nothing too special, but it's not too bad either. And the same thing can be said for the next one, which is Office Christmas Party, just another average movie. It's okay, I guess, decent at best, and nothing too special, so stocking stuff it is. Next one is The Preacher's Wife, which I have never seen, so yeah. And now next up, we have Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys, another Christmas classic, kind of. It's a great film, it's a great Christmas movie, and I love it. It's an enjoyable, great film, and it has that spirit. It has the festivities that it should, just like the original. But speaking of the original, I don't think it's quite as good as the original, so I'm going to keep it in worth the wrapping just to play it safe. And now we get into Santa Claus 3, which is, of course, like I said earlier, the ending movie in the trilogy of Santa Claus movies starring Tim Allen. And this one is weird. I've actually watched this movie somewhat recently, but I've definitely watched it prior to that too when I was younger, and I've always loved Jack Frost. I'm not sure why. And he was probably one of the first things that got me into the whole, like, ice and frozen theme when it comes to pretty much anything. And the whole amusement park thing. I know, I trust me, trust me. I'm aware that the movie is an abomination and it is an, a complete mess. But I'm putting it here simply because my nostalgic love still holds up. Whew, I know that ranking was a little rocky. That was a little ballsy. But thankfully, we're back on the right path as we finally get another movie worth and going just the tip with Santa Claus is Coming to Town. A true, true classic. And now the next one is also, arguably, a cl another classic, and really depends on who you ask, but it is Santa Buddies. And if you can't tell, which you probably should, you probably all know this movie, but it's about dogs, and that's why it's a high ranking. The movie necessarily isn't really a good or great movie, but it's about dogs during Christmas. So it deserves something high. And honestly, no other explanation is needed. And the same thing can be said about the next one, which is Santa with Muscles. What a title. What a movie. It's not good, but it's also not the worst ever. And the only reason why it's in what it is, is it because it's Hulk Hogan as Santa Claus. Kind of, not really. You gotta watch the movie. But besides, it's pretty average. Maybe below average, but you already heard why my ranking is what it is. So, <laughs> that's that. And now next up, we have the Christmas special for Spongebob Squarepants, which just feels wrong if I give it anything else besides just the tip. Now that I say it like that, that feels really wrong, but ranking-wise, it does not. It really only deserves e either that or worth the wrapping, and I think it's pretty fitting. I think it's pretty deserving, maybe. It's Spongebob. You can't really blame me there. Coming up on the few final movies, I'm so sorry the tier list is like shaking and like changing here and there, but it has to work, so, and it is working, so yeah, there you go. But now we have the rated R film, The Night Before, which is literally about the night before Christmas, as there's three guys, and the main character, played by Seth Rogen, is having a child, so the guys have to pretty much get in the holiday spirit and hang out before them hanging out times are over, considering he's turning into a father and whatnot, just to watch the goddamn movie. 
I think it's deserving around the balls category, so I'm going to put it in snowballs or B tier, whatever you prefer. Now the next one is Twas the Night, and I kind of watched this after I finished Breaking Bad and wanted to see more of the actors that are present in there, with this one starring Brian Cranston, where they pretty much steal Santa's sleigh. And it is exactly what you're thinking. It is the most average, basic Christmas film that there could be, and it deserves to be right in the middle. And now for the next film, The Ultimate Christmas Present, which I won't lie, that does sound like an awesome title for the movie, but I've never seen this one, so we have to move on and pass this one. Which actually leads to the final movie. The final movie to rank for this Christmas tier list, done by yours truly, of course, and that is this movie, which I've never ever seen or heard of in the slightest. But like I mentioned, that was the final film that we had to rank, so now I think the Christmas tier list has finished. It's complete, and I'm trying to see if I want to rearrange anything, or just change any of the tiers, or movies at all, here and there, but I don't think so I do. I don't think so. So I think that is it. I definitely could, but uh, screw it. If you think any movie on here deserves a different tier, or lower, higher, whatever the case, or a movie that hasn't shown up on here, feel free to let me know. I didn't make this to be fair, so I just grabbed it and did it myself. So, yeah. But anyways, that would be the end of this one. Feel free to leave any comments, feedback, critiques, anything like that. And if I haven't watched the movie, recommend it. Feel free to. It doesn't matter. I don't know if I watch it, but you can at least comment. But with that, you should comment, and you should also like and subscribe, especially if you're willing to watch the rest of the 12 days of XXXmas here on the channel. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, please and thank you, and happy holidays. See ya.